after the West Coast tour, um, we had a little uh, little downtime, and there was a lot of recording, uh, songwriting, and um, uh, a lot of creativity kind of flowing. And uh, basically, we got together and we needed, we needed to record another album. You know, after our first tour, it became the the, the, the fall of uh, 2010. Because Tom, Tom was still li living over in uh, you know like North Carolina, Baltimore area at the time, and I'm I'm on I'm in Oregon, living in Oregon. And a series, we swapped, some, I mean, countless files, ideas. So we started like working like that, where, uh, you know, I'm laying down scratch drum parts, some ideas, sending it back. We do these file sharing things. I mean, there was it was kind of frustrating, but it was also very, uh, just it was different. But it, there's something that just really clicked between these the, the songwriting process being on. on two ends of the United States, you know? We would swap these files back and forth, and we find them, like Dan would send me something, I, I would be in my, my uh, practice room, and I would lay down an idea, send it back, and we did this for months. I mean, it was, I can't imagine working like this again. So then we kind of got something solidified. We're like, okay, well, this song, uh, it needs to be on this recording. So then, you know, we kind of kept going, okay, this song could be on it, but I'm not really sure. So. We'll see when we get a little bit closer to the recording date. So we, uh, you know, we decided, well, let's, let's, let's do another album. Let's, it's time for another album. It'll be about two years. So we try to release something new, significant every two years or so. So, so yeah, we were, uh, it was all right. We have a goal. We recorded at uh, Echo Studios in Sharpsburg, uh, Maryland. Um, right on the Antietam battlefield. It was a, it was kind of nice because you're out of, away, away from the city and. You know, it's, it's a little, un, a little untraditional, but it had like a, a, a vibe that I felt was fit really well with the, the music at the time. Kind of had like a folky, more of a folky element. Tom and I, are, we just like, we don't know when to stop. You know, when we're in the mode of recording, it's like, oh, we don't even have time to eat. So it's like, record, 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 take a little bit of a break, record, record, record. <laughs> you know, it's nonstop. So someone has to kind of be like, hey, all right, it's time for a little break. <laughs> okay. I mean, I don't know what we were thinking, and we were going to go into the studio for a week and record all of it and come out the other end with something. <laughs> of course, you know, uh, just like that. So we book a, book a whole week. Uh, Daniel flies out from uh, Oregon to Baltimore. No distractions out there, and we could live. We lived at his studio for like a week straight um, working on this album. And, uh, I mean, we, we bled, we sweat. Cried. I mean, it was a, it was a, it was, just, it was a very intense album to make. The attractive part of that was like, wow, we're just going to be locked in together, just working on this album, and it was, it was so much fun. I, I slept upstairs in the in the barn in this recording studio, and uh, which was downstairs, and there was a couch and um, a little coffee table, and I basically just kind of set my sleeping bag up there. And, there was some other guitars in the room, and there were a bunch of posters. So when I went to sleep, I was you know, there was some, there was some psychedelic, psychedelic stuff going on <laughs> up in that room. Okay, so we came up with the game plan because we were only there for like seven or eight days. So we'll do all the vocals in the morning, and then once like a song was done, I'll cut another one or two drum tracks and acoustic guitars in the afternoon. Just sleep there, wake up in the morning. Tom would get up pretty early and. We uh, sometimes bring me coffee, or uh, I get up and we just go out and catch a breather before we get the day started. It was kind of cool because we had these little duties to do in the morning, turn on everything. It was fun, you know, part of the wake up process with drinking coffee, I guess. <laughs>
we done, Dan? We're done, Tom. <laughs> man. That's a wrap. TKO. Little knockout. So at that point, um, or actually before Christmas, I was, I was starting to book a tour. So I was like, we got to get this album out in the spring. And then we'll tour in the spring. It'll be perfect because college is in session. And we'll go on the West Coast again because we were there about a year ago. And people remember us. So at the same time as this album's being mixed, I'm going out to Sharpsburg, overseeing this every you know week or so. And I'm booking this tour, getting gearing up for that. We originally asked Jack if he wanted to you know, part participate in the tour and didn't seem like his he was going to be able to. I remember talking with Dan, I was like, Man, I really don't want to do this as a duo. I really want to do it right with this album. Well, I know a guy. Let's see uh, how this works out. Um, Dan was like, okay, let's, let's try Let's We need bass player, yeah. But that didn't really work out. Before we left Baltimore, I left Baltimore, um, the bassist came and met at my place and we kind of worked on stuff and it, it wasn't going well. I probably should have sent him, sent him home then, but I was willing to give it a shot. So we flew out, we flew out together to Oregon to meet with, with Dan and do a couple more days of rehearsing there before we went on the road. So we scheduled a rehearsal with this guy and uh, it was in my parents' house up, upstairs in my room. We were uh, rehearsing at, at Dan's, Dan's, uh, Dan's rehearsal spot and um, with the, the bass player, the three of us, and it just wasn't working out. I mean, it wasn't even, it was, it, even on a personal level, it just, it, for a hired gun, it just did not have it together. We started off with a couple of songs. Um, immediately, I wasn't impressed. Um, there, I asked him, you know, if he could play a couple of parts. He kept asking me what key stuff was in, um, and uh, that kind of made me a little nervous because he didn't you know, necessarily do his homework. And that kind of uh, uh, frustrated me, and I can tell that frustrated Tom. So we we're, we we had to do something. Yeah, I mean we couldn't take this guy out on the road. It would have been a nightmare. Kind of just let it sit for a little bit, and I know Tom was starting to think about something. So uh, I somehow got the crazy idea that we can send this guy home and get somebody else at the last minute, in like three days somehow. And I started thinking of uh, this could be a this this could yeah. I can make this happen. Like, something, something will happen. No, yeah, we can. I can do this. I just gotta like let everybody know <laughs> how it's gonna work out. So I put some thought into it, and uh, I started thinking, well, who could, who, who could do this? You know. And uh, he's like, hey, hey. Uh, the next morning, he says, hey, Dan, uh, meet me at the coffee down the street. Pick me up and. Uh, well, let's go to this coffee shop, and I was like, okay, what's up, you all right? And he's like, yeah, I just got something to run by you. Really the first thing that popped into my mind immediately was like, Richard McCorkle, yeah. Um, I believe Tom and I had met at a open jam. It was a like a Wednesday night open mic type of thing. I was the, the house drummer at the Black Flower in Raleigh, and I remember uh, jamming with him. And I kind of jumped up on stage, played a little bit, and then went, kind of went back to my seat, and, and that was that. So anyways, long story short, <laughs> I remember uh, calling Richard up. I noticed there was a bunch of voicemails, and there was a bunch of texts, and I was like, oh, you know, what's going on? Something along the lines of like, look, can you, uh, can you come out and tour or something like that? And, um, and you know, look, here's the deal, I told him what was going on. And Tom sounded really desperate, um, and it was something to the like of, you know, we're out here, um, the bass player's not working out, please give me a call, all that kind of stuff. He uh, called me back. Long story, um, but the bass player's just not working out. And uh, we, what are you doing for the next two weeks? <laughs> it's basically it. And I said, well, I have rehearsal tonight, I have a gig on Friday, but after that I'm free. And he said yes. And um, so I immediately had to send him the files of the songs so he can learn them. And I think I had like 48 hours to go or something like that. You know, what I'll do is uh, we're going to take care of this business with the, the bass player out here. And I'll send you the song files and uh, send you as much notes as we can and, and stuff. Would you be able to learn the material <laughs> and come out here in two days? And um, I was like, well, okay. 
And while that's going on, we're trying to figure out how to send the other bass player home. I uh, actually took him to the, uh, the um, Motel, Motel 6 <laughs> and uh, said, here's your room and uh, here's your ticket and goodbye. Here I am on a plane flying eight hours total to go out to Medford, Oregon. Um, and uh, the journey began. So later that day, uh, the next day, we, or the day after, we, we uh, picked up Richard up, picked up Richard at the airport, and it was uh, it just felt right. Like immediately, you know, my concern was, is he going to get along well with Dan? Like how's it gonna, how's he going to fit with Dan? You know, I I, I I know I can handle the guy. You know. <laughs> so I get down there and get to the baggage claim, and I saw Tom. I gave him a hug and met Dan and. And, uh, you know, I tried to make sure to kind of connect with Dan because I knew he was kind of the guy I didn't know and he was kind of an important part of the band. So um, I connected with him and, you know, right away it was, it, it was, um, it was a media connection. It was, it was like just right, like right, right off the bat, it was like they were long lost friends and brothers. You know, we, we immediately jumped into some, uh, some humor, um, lightened the mood. I remember Tom and Dan said, well, what do you want to do? And I said, I need a burger and a beer. And, and Richard, that's one of the first things Richard said, I need a burger and a beer. <laughs> Never forget it. <laughs> and that was my only request. I just needed some comfort food and I needed to get like kind of like relaxed because um, I was so wound up. You know, it was, just, it was great, the three of us. And uh, we, we rehearsed, started rehearsing. Set up in my parents' living room. We just moved all the couches. So we started running through the songs. We started playing. And I'll tell you what, I felt so comfortable, so at home with these two guys. You know, we're a little, a little nervous and right out of the gate, I mean, uh, Richard knew these songs. He surpassed all of my expectations within the first run through of all of the music. It was really impressive. Uh, he did his homework. So impressed. So impressed. And right from then on, I mean, musically, it was more. There was more confidence in the music, and we. And it was really, really impressive. Wow, this sounds pretty decent, you know. And I kind of had to keep on rechecking myself with the guy, saying, "Does this sound good? Does this sound good?" Yeah. So we had, we hit the road running running in the west on the west coast and um uh you know we, you know it's it's it was an exciting time because you know we we have a new guy and we're getting to know him and he's getting to know us and it was a lot of fun because it, it, we i could feel, feel all of us getting closer and the closer we got personally and as friends the, the more the music came together and i really noticed that and it was hand in hand that tour um was fantastic um, some great, great moments, some not so good moments, not so much in, in, in like problems with the band, within the band. It was usual, you know, some things didn't work out as well and I certainly was learning the material and, and those guys were kind of getting used to me playing. Um, but again, that's only two hours of the day. The rest of the day is really existing with each other. It became, it became our brother because uh, we started bust, we, 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 we joke on each other like brothers all the time and uh, it was a lot of fun, you know, and um, yeah, you know, you know, you, you bring somebody that you don't know too well and they, they start fitting in really well and you're getting, you know, we're sharing a hotel room together and it's like, you know, you're living with each other in this little can, you know, for two weeks and, you know, we're not sick of each other, you know, that's why I noticed like this is a great chemistry. So we all take a nice little walk down to College Cove, which is in uh, Humboldt and near Arcata area, and um, take a walk on the beach. And it was a beautiful day. We had such a good time, and uh, uh, it was like it was like these 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 three these three uh, friends just all hanging out, having a good time. And the tide was coming up, and we were kind of nestling up on the on the on the shores, and. And we were all sharing a bottle of tequila, and it was one of the most magical moments that personally I've ever had in my life, but also one of the most connecting things I've ever had with anybody. And to have uh, these soon-to-be two brothers was, was a very magical moment, and I, I will never forget that. I, I will never forget. The 
look so bright Holes in her jeans It fits so tight She rolled a southbound train To Oregon A flower in her hand And a smile in her stare She took to 2 a.m. With one suitcase Started to burst from her lack of space She broke down In the little book All the dreams that she mistook away So we all got back together um, and we're getting ready to go up to the next um, next show and we we approached Richard and uh, asked him if he wanted to be a member. We gotta get this guy in the band, you know. So I'm, we asked him, Richard, we, we want to let you, you know, we we'd like, we'd love for you, for you to join Leeward Fate and be a member. I said to them, I said, well, you know, we're kind of in our honeymoon period right now. He said, well, guys, we're really feeling happy right now. We're really having a good time. Let's wait till this is all done. Um, we've got another half of this tour to do. Let's, let's just wait, and then we'll decide then. Uh, let's, let's give it a little breathing room after the tour to see how we, uh, how we all feel about this, and um, we'll reconvene and give it a little bit of a, a nice uh, buffer. Let's just think about it for a week. And if we're still feeling the same the week later, uh, the, then we can go from there. In the inside, I was like, oh, this is great, man. I would love to do this. You know? And then at the same time, it's like I didn't want to jump into something that I would regret later. And one of the things I did not want to do was commit to something that perhaps I would not be into in the future. So I was rather you know, cautious about that. We asked him about calling you. What do you, what do you think about this, this album? Richard, what do you what do you think you know of the uh, the album? You, you're like you're like calling you is, is good, but I I think the next one is going to be the one. And I remember seeing the disappointment in Tom's face. I was kind of bummed up because I was like, oh, this is this one's good. What's wrong with this one? I said, calling you is a, is a great album. I think it's fantastic. And I said, but I just have a feeling that the next album is going to be the one. Uh, I really appreciated that because I, I mean it's easy to get caught up in. Here's a kind of an outsider still coming in and giving this honest opinion and a trusted opinion, and, um, and that's what I love about this band is that we can talk amongst and uh, be there for each other and share our, our, our feelings, you know, our gut feelings. I think there's something bigger and greater that's going to come down the road um, yeah, out of you guys and potentially out of him, and um, he was right. But there was something within me that was saying this band is growing somewhere whether I'm a part of it or not there, this, this band is there's an expansion to this band that I can't put my f finger on but that's my knee-jerk response to Tom's question. A couple of weeks later after we ended the tour you know we brought up you know you want to be a part of this and Richard said yes. So I believe they asked me to join one more time and, and I finally said yes. So uh, we finished up the tour at uh, Roscoe's in Medford, Oregon, and uh, it was a great show. Everybody came out, and uh, we had a, we had an awesome time, and um, we played well, and there was good sound, um, and everybody just had a, a wonderful experience. And we all went our separate ways. Uh, Dan stayed in Oregon. Um, Tom went back to Baltimore, Maryland, and I went back to Raleigh, North Carolina, and. Um, None of us knew where it was going to go, what we were going to do. And so the future was really, there was an open door 